It's his friend and his longtime aide and speechwriter, Mark Salter, who is with us now. Mark, good morning to you. I know how close you were, and so I send our sympathies and our condolences. I know this is such a loss. Thank you. I read um, a story yesterday, and I loved the way this Washington Post writer put it, that Senator McCain bore his brain cancer diagnosis without self-pity. And I thought, that is so him. How were his spirits in these final days and weeks and months? Oh, they were pretty good. Um, <clears throat> he, he was in the place he loved the best, as his wife put it. Uh, he died surrounded by his family, the people he loved most, in the place he loved the best. Uh, he was stoic, but grateful thankful for for all the many blessings in the in the long eventful purposeful life he got to lead in service to this country so it was um, he couldn't have um, he couldn't have scripted a better exit from this world as I mentioned you worked together for decades you were his right-hand man I used to think of you on the campaign as the McCain whisperer what have we yeah. lost when we lost John McCain well, we lost a great man a man who um, sometimes seems to me to belong to another century or at least the post-World War II generation, a guy who believed in fighting bad guys to help little guys, who believed in the values that this country was, were founded, was founded on, and uh, worked very hard to make sure they were extended to as many people on this planet as, as possible. He was funny. We know that. He had a sharp tongue. He seemed to enjoy a fight. Would you agree with that? Yeah, he had a saying, a fight not joined is a fight not enjoyed. He did. He was an exuberant, and enthusiastic, fun-loving, purposeful. Life around him was hectic, busy, exhausting, but um, an awful lot of fun and, and a, 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 awfully satisfying. You know, I went back and read last night his first account in the 70s when he just was released as a prisoner of war, having served five and a half years in Vietnam as a prisoner of war. And I was struck by how he remembered everything, described everything, but it was also so matter of fact. Even then, he yeah. didn't betray his emotions. Was he always like that? You wrote a book about this experience with him. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because um, I would ask him about the bad things, obviously, the stories that people know, the torture. Um, and he would be very matter of fact about that stuff. You know, just this is what happened. This is what they gave me to eat. This is what they did to me when I refused to do this. This is, you know, this is uh, how long uh, this particular experience with torture lasted. But it wasn't um, there wasn't any bitterness or or. Uh, fury behind it what he wanted to talk about was the fun he had in prison you know <laughs> and when you're in when you're in solitary confinement for two of the five and a half years it's it's hard to have fun but he had a guy in the cell next door to him and they would tell each other jokes through tap codes and he'd talk he'd talk about all that stuff but then and, and, and in great detail but the uh the bad stuff he, he 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 gave me the the outlines of it but skipped along it pretty quickly there are a lot of remembrances planned for this week, and I, I have to ask you about President Trump, who, who Senator McCain, um, as I understand it, did not want to be attending any of these services. Uh, there's a report in the Washington Post that the White House had prepared a statement praising Senator McCain for the, the president to issue, but he chose not to and instead just issued a tweet to the family. How does that sit with you? What do you think Senator McCain yeah. would be saying this morning? I, th I think he'd brush it off. You know, Savannah, I'm going to try very hard uh, not to think or or, uh, or or talk about Donald Trump for this week and just do what I can to help uh, make sure that uh, John is buried with the honors and decorum he's earned from years of faithful service to his country. Fair enough. What do you think he would think of all this this fuss? I mean, they're going, he, he'll be he, lying in state at the U.S. Capitol. They're talking about renaming the Russell Senate office building after him. Yeah, he um, he'd be very touched. Uh, he was a modest man in many ways, but uh, you know, he he um, he would have been very touched uh, when when we left his beloved ranch in Cornville and made the drive to Phoenix. The uh, I'm sorry, um, the roads were lined with people who spontaneously showed up to wave flags and put their hands over their hearts. It was quite moving. Well, it is exactly what Senator McCain, lifelong servant to this country, deserves. Mark Salter, thank you for waking up early, for sharing your thoughts, um, and for all your work on behalf of this country as well. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Savannah.
We'll have much more on Senator John McCain's life of service and sacrifice throughout the morning. And Tom Brokaw will join us a little bit later and share his thoughts as well. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.